Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dr. C channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for an introduction into this here new radio from Flysky. It is the NV14, 14, 14 channel radio, Nirvana. Yes, and I have to say that I've been struggling to make a video about this, uh, this transmitter. See, on the one hand it's very good, and on the other hand it's uh, not good at all. <laughs> yeah, so what's up with that? Um, well, this radio was introduced uh, in the beginning of this year, in February, maybe March of 2018. And uh, at first glance I thought, wow, now that is a radio, that's something new and exciting to look forward to. And I couldn't wait. And um, turns out I, sh <laughs> I should have waited a bit longer, probably. So we're now in the middle of September. And yeah, it's uh, available. You can uh, order this uh, radio from Banggood, for instance, as I have. And the hardware side of things is awesome. This really feels like a quality radio. It's not light and the materials used are solid, the gimbals feel great, switches. Um, it feels ergonomic and it uh, is definitely something different to look at with its uh, big color touch screen. So that's all very nice, but am I happy with this transmitter? No, at this moment I'm not since the firmware, the software on this transmitter is far from ready. Yeah, so um, again, I've been struggling to see what I should tell you about this transmitter. Um, the first thing I should tell you about this transmitter is that I'll have a, a playlist up here about this, this transmitter. Yes, a uh, playlist solely for this transmitter. And if you watch this video on a later date, you might want to have a look in that uh, playlist. There will probably be updates and I will keep you up to date on uh, what's up with this transmitter. New firmwares, are they any good? Uh, do they solve the issues we have with this transmitter or not? Uh, I'll also do some test flying with this transmitter and tell you what my uh, experience with it is. Uh, in this video I'll introduce you to this, uh, this new transmitter from Flysky and um, I'll tell you whether to uh, order it. Well, no, it'll be up to you. Uh, you'll have to decide if the omissions in the firmware that are present right now are important to you. That's all I can tell you. I can't tell you to buy this transmitter because things that are important to me might not be important to you and the other way around. So, you'll have to make up your own mind. And um, one other thing I struggled with, um, I've seen a couple of review videos on this transmitter and I, I'm not sure why, but this transmitter seems to have reviews, uh, disingenuous reviews more than other products. Sure, I can understand that um, Reviewers have to live as well, uh, things have to be sold, uh, affiliate sales and such, so that's it. But on this transmitter I found that to be true more than in other products. Um, I've watched a couple of reviews of this transmitter uh, and while listening to it and having the radio in my hand, checking the features, I thought, what the hell are you talking about? You're, you're basically deceiving your viewers. And I'm not gonna gonna tell uh, call names, but I I'm I'm not sure why this product has that more than other products. Oh well, let's first take a close-up look at this transmitter and uh, why is it so different uh, compared to other transmitters? What's good and what's bad? And that's it for this video. And again, I'll do more videos on this transmitter as updates arrive. Here we go. Okay, so there you go. There's a close-up look 
at our new transmitter. A big screen and you, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but there are some fingerprint smudges on there because it is a touch screen and that's, that's Thank you for using Fly Sky. pretty luxurious. Uh, the startup splash screen showed you a Fly Sky logo, but this is Genuine Open TX. Just the uh, Fly Sky's flavor of that, I guess. So, as you can see, touchscreen, yay! And it's a very responsive touchscreen at that. Um, I'm not sure what it'll look like on camera, but um, well, the, the colors look pretty nice. And um, a quick tour, even though this will be obsolete in uh, hopefully <laughs> coming firmwares. You've got your model set up over here, and this will be very familiar to OpenTX users uh, with the addition of uh, being able to use uh, the screen itself as a touch controller, uh, which is in some cases better than a turn dial or buttons, which you will find on FR Sky radios. Sometimes it's a bit of a, a battle to to get things done. Actually let me show you an example of that. Uh, the second option over here is the radio setup, so global radio setup. And let me scroll through, yeah, screen brightness. As you can hopefully see I've got it set to maximum. However it's, it's pretty hard to get it to the maximum. I don't have very thick fingers, but uh, to select that that 100% uh, position on this slider, the slider is basically a bit too close to the edge of the screen. So maybe a stylus would help out. Uh, not that you change this setting all of the time, but uh, well. There are other sliders in the setup of this radio. Um, yeah, okay, so sometimes it's, uh, it's very handy to have a touchscreen. Sometimes, um, yeah. Okay, so, and uh, the screens you have here for your model setup are basically the same as in any OpenTX radio. You've got your model name and image, which at this moment does nothing, regrettably, and uh, yeah, um, helicopter setup. You can't uh, get rid of that page right now, in the future you can. Uh, flight modes and uh, inputs and can I scroll? Yeah, this is sometimes hard to scroll through these, but here are your mixes and outputs and curves and logical switches, special features and telemetry. So that's most, actually most of the things are there. But uh, for instance, uh, Lua scripts aren't implemented yet. So if you uh, want to use Lua scripts, and um, I kind of <laughs> do, uh, yeah, you can't use those right now. Uh, I'm surely they'll they'll be available in the future, but right now you can't use Lua scripts. You also see that this screen is uh, mostly blank. And on other OpenTX radios, you can set up widgets, right? Uh, but um, set up widgets, set up widgets, set up widgets, nothing. So uh, what I oh, what I like is, uh, for instance, uh, a channel monitor in my main screen. Uh, maybe, uh, especially if you have a new radio like I I have now, I want to check before I fly uh, what is my modes button and what is my arming switch. So I just flip the switches and see in my channel monitor uh, if I have the right switch in mind. Right, so uh, I don't have that feature right now. Maybe you want uh, a big old timer in your uh, radio screen. Uh, more than useful, right? But uh, no, the, the widgets don't work right now. Regrettably, you do uh, have the channel monitor reasonably close by over here, as you can see. Yeah, it is, does work, but again, I'd like to have this in my my main screen. So yeah, and um, uh, let me flip a switch there. There's my uh, mode switch, for instance. But uh, again, I'd like to see that in my main screen right over here. Uh, also, 
if you set up an image for your model, you can't display it over here. Surely that'll uh, change in the future. Uh, in open, uh, other OpenTX uh, platforms or implementations, those features are available. So I'm, I am sure we'll see those features, but yeah, not right now. Okay, so uh, the gimbals. Uh, the gimbals are of very high quality. Uh, actually, uh, the Eversky X10S I have has very good gimbals. These are better, more precise. They don't sway around the center point at all. And they, they feel very precise as well. Uh, the springs, and you've probably seen uh, or heard that in other reviews, the springs are a bit uh, loose. You can tighten them up uh, in the radio a little bit, but yeah, maybe you'll get used to this, but um, I'm not sure. For my liking they are a little loose. What did help by the way is I extended the, the sticks a little, approximately 2 millimeters. Somehow that made the feel better. So if you have the issue with this radio it, uh, it being uh, too loose the sticks, you might want to experiment with the length of the sticks to see if that helps you out. It did help me out. All right, uh, we've got switches. We've got a two position switch, a momentary switch, a two position switch and a three position switch. You've got turn dials over here, two, these two metal things. And um, are those useful to airplane pilots? Mwah. For, for instance, if you'd want to use those for flaps, you'd want them over here, right? But this radio really isn't developed for airplane pilots, I think. I will be trying it uh, with airplanes, but the radio is specifically developed for FPV use. Alright, so uh, you've got these two buttons over here, which are the on-off buttons, and you have to press them simultaneously. And uh, familiar off thing. You've got these two blue things and those are your trim buttons. Up and down, left and right. And that seems to work out pretty well actually. And uh, again I'll try that with an airplane. On quadcopters you generally don't use trims. But you can assign other functions uh, to it. Uh, if you uh, fly uh, multi-rotors with this uh, transmitter, you can uh, set up anything. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what, <laughs> to, to be honest. But, uh, well, they are there and they can be assigned to any function you'd want. Flipping the radio over, you see four more switches, which are obviously accessible if you hold the radio. So they are on the back of the radio. You've got two momentary switches, the longer switches, and two three position switches. And they are very close to each other though. Just something to keep in mind, but uh, I'm using for instance this switch over here for my arming and my buzzer. Uh, this switch over here is pretty close by. Then again, I don't really and I don't intend to use this switch, so it's a non-issue for me. You also have a module bay. For instance, uh, for a model uh, module like this, this is a uh, DFM X module, and uh, it slots right in over here, and it it works. I've tested that, and uh, yeah, so that's that's nice. Crossfire, um, yeah, you no know Lua scripts, right? So, and, and I don't use Crossfire either, so um, maybe in the future um, I'll try and have an update on that uh, in the future, but right now I don't have a Crossfire module. Also you see these anodized, are they aluminum? Yeah, probably. Protrusions over here which act like stands, but also like grips. Your fingers will slide around them. Uh, which uh, really provides a lot of grip on the, the radio, which is uh, nice, it gives you a reassuring feel to the radio. And um, yeah, oh, these plastic 
things, this, these plastic structures, uh, you have to uh, screw onto the radio yourself. Uh, four screws, no big deal of course. You also have this fold out antenna over here, which is obviously for the internal transmitter, right? You don't have to extend this this uh, aerial, this antenna. The radio has a secondary one over here in the body of the transmitter. Um, with this antenna up though you'll have longer range. Okay and there's one other switch and it's embedded over here in, these, uh, the, in the top one of these two screw holes. These two screw holes are actually intended for this lanyard hook. Slides onto the radio like so and you screw it on but with that removed you can access this button over here with a small uh, allen key for instance and that is your bootloader button so if you want to update the firmware you'll have to press that and then switch the radio on or press it and then hook up the USB. One last thing about the hardware it runs on two batteries which are in the in the handles so to speak if you want to call these the handles and these are rechargeable uh, 18650 batteries now i am using usb chargeables as you can can hopefully see uh, so uh, yeah i can charge them anywhere but but if you have them in the radio and you hook up the radio via the usb port they will also get charged, so it's not really necessary. So that's nice, uh, you don't need an external charger for this radio. Now one thing that makes this radio very convenient, uh, much like the Turnigy Evolution, also from Flysky, is this plastic cover. It covers the, the gimbals obviously and all the switches, well at least the switches on the front of the radio, and you simply clip it on like so and you can throw your transmitter into your backpack and I very much like that because I travel with a backpack most times so yeah um, at least the gimbals are always protected and the switches on the front and the ones on the rear yeah they don't really stick out from the rear so this is a, uh, a nice uh, thing, thing to have oops <laughs> that was a bit violent Okay, but uh, yeah, uh, a very nice uh, addition to the radio and uh, it makes the, the radio very compact in your backpack. Very, very nice. Now, um, this is not an unboxing, but let me show you a couple of more things that come with the radio. It comes with a USB cord to hook it up to your computer, file transfer, and uh, use it as a simulator, controller, firmware updates, so yeah, USB, micro USB, regrettably not USB-C, why? Okay, and a body box or trainer port cable, USB port on the radio is over here, and there's a trainer port, which I regrettably have not been able to get working. Uh, so that's, uh, that might be one of the things that's uh, lacking in the current firmware. Uh, trainer port doesn't seem to do anything. Boohoo, yeah. But again, maybe in the future or probably in the future. Now this radio, if you at least get it from uh, Banggood, the one I have, so not the underground FPV version, but the Banggood version comes with two receivers. And um, yeah, this one is nice and small, but not uh, long range, so it only has one little uh, antenna. And this one is, yeah, is diversity long range, but it's a little big. It's far bigger than, for instance, all the FR Sky receivers we've come used to XM Plus, XSR, RXSR. And that's really something Flysky needs to work on. A better selection of receivers. If they do so, if they bring nice uh, full range receivers, preferably with telemetry to the market, they'll have a killer product on their hands. That's my opinion of course, but uh, I, I really think so. And the last thing, yeah, the, the transmitter also comes with this uh, sticker sheet. And, um, yeah. Uh, they are nice uh, stickers, don't get me wrong, and I always like to get stickers, so uh, thank you very much. 
So, wrapping things up. Um, is this the radio for you at this point in time? Um, who am I to tell you? Uh, I'm sure you'll uh, be able to judge for yourself if you'd want to uh, order this radio right now or maybe never or maybe in a couple of months. Am I happy I ordered it? Um, the, the strange thing is, I uh, while I'm packing, packing this, uh, this transmitter, I was happier than with most other products. Now, after a while figuring uh, out uh, the, the, the software side of things, yeah, that put a, a bit of a damper on uh, things for me, of course. Um, but um, I'm still very happy with the, the hardware side of things. And I am looking forward to at least trying uh, to um, go and fly my uh, quadcopters with this radio. It's, it's easier to transport than um, big radios, my big uh, FR Sky radio, the X10S. So that makes it. And uh, the gimbals are definitely better, more precise than on any FR Sky transmitter. But yeah, uh, we'll have to uh, wait a while for the, for the firmware to uh, fully catch up to, uh, to things. So that's, um, that's my take and uh, you'll have to judge uh, for yourself. Again, um, have a look at my playlist about this transmitter. I'll have regular updates on uh, this thing. Um, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. There's a comment section below <laughs> in, in this uh, video, uh, as always. So uh, feel free to ask anything and uh, catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.